Bungalow Bill here, and welcome back to From the Depths. In the last episode, I showed off a tech demo of a dive bomber. Over the past few days, I refined the dive bomber a little bit and tossed the carrier together quickly. This is a little bit of a test, a little bit of an experiment for me, because I have not really built a carrier before. The craft are packed in a little bit on the dent side, so they rub taking off a little bit. It's usually not a huge deal. It is a problem if they touch the side of the craft. I can, you know, make this a little bit wider and that sort of thing to make it less likely. In the long run, I don't want to use rubber because that's kind of expensive. And this vehicle, with all of its drones, needs to come in at roughly the same cost as the Kitakame, so that I can have a Kami war between the Kitikami and the Kitakame. All, all that I have left to put on her is armor. So, like 55,000 materials in armor. Should be reasonably good overall, given that I want this vehicle to just be incredibly tanky. Well, not necessarily incredibly tanky, but reasonably durable. Just a base for these vehicles. I want it to take fire over these vehicles when they're the only things in play. But, you know, if I have a small battleship or even, like, a cruiser or that sort of thing, I want that to take fire over the carrier. I haven't really laid out this stuff yet, so I have her on god mode for these tests. Uh, given her size and the small amount of cost I have for her, she's going to be a lot of wood and stone. With just a little bit of wood and maybe or a little bit of metal, and maybe some heavy armor wraps in some places. These missiles are pretty standard. Their firepower is a little bit lacking, but they have reinforced bodies to help the slightly smaller missiles from the danger nuggets get through. And then I have pods under all of the nuggets, and they basically just contain two repair units, sub-vehicle spawner, tractor beam that has a name change, and I don't use ACVs to control these. I would need like a bajillion ACVs for all the behavior that these things have. So I'm using AI breadboards, and I'm using the new block on the alpha test branch, the generic block setter. And basically, when an enemy spawns in, it starts a timer. When the last enemy dies, the timer is reset to zero. And whenever it exceeds a certain value, it will turn a tractor beam off. And these launch the nuggets. And these launch the kitty hawks. The, um, what this does is it only outputs a 1 here when this value changes, which means that this generic block setter is only active when the value being set to it is being changed. The reason that I'm doing that is because the mothership can't recall, or as far as I can tell, I can't get the drone health. So only the drones know when they need to come and go based on repairs. And these drones have an ACB that if they have less than 98% health, they'll dock. That should actually probably be 99% health. As soon as they lose one of these aerodynamic blocks, they lose a little bit too much accuracy. We'll probably see that in the tests. This one triggers on ACB taking damage. It does not seem to work. I thought this used to work if the ACB was destroyed, but it doesn't. So if we see the middle of these get cored out, they're just going to flop in the water instead of going in for repairs. This ACB, if the current hour is with a negative infinity to infinity, to infinity, will undock it, but it's disabled. It's not, it's not enabled, it doesn't do anything. It gets set from the AI breadboard, which either enables or disables the control block. The reason is because from a control block, you can dock or undock with a mothership. As far as I can tell, you cannot do that from a breadboard. Unfortunately, the generic block setter in the usages here does not work on the first frame that it's input. So I have this timer here that causes it to enable the control block for five frames instead. Super hacky. Basically what this is supposed to do is just when the vehicle health fraction hits one, and the vehicle health fraction is increasing, and there's an enemy spawned in. 
it will undock with a mothership. So that's how these take damage, come in for repairs, go back out and fight again. Because I have nine of these things, they collide with each other all the time. Usually they manage to take off without having to come back in for repairs. Not always the case. They also get shot down by the enemy vehicles a lot. They don't get shot much on the way in, at least not by main guns, because they're too dodgy. Due to some laziness on the way out, they don't have their evasion turned on. It has to do with how they set the waypoint on the way out. Not actually that difficult for me to change. There's a few different things that I can do to fix it. One is to just make the waypoint wiggle. That's the super lazy way to do it, which means it's probably the way that I'm going to do it. The other way is that I can make the waypoint static. Currently, the waypoint runs away from them. It's always at a certain bearing, in a certain distance, in a certain height. Just keeps running away. The evasion is tied to the PN guidance. Since they're not approaching it, the PN guidance is turned off because it's only turned on when it's approaching something. And, well, it doesn't get any wiggle. So, uh, it won't be that hard for me to fix, but I do have to fix it at some point. Let's bully a Kingstead. So they're bumping each other a little bit, but the kinetic damage is very low. I got a little repairs there from one of the Kitty Hawks. Managed to take off without destroying each other, which is always good. They wobble on the way in, although they stop by the time they start diving. We'll s I'll try to capture that wiggle on the way back, although uh, usually the Kingstead does not survive. So the Kingstead has some interesting AI positioning and armoring. Oh, which causes it to really not like this. And when the enemy's dead, we recall all of the drones. So let's take our anger out on something a little bit sturdier. And something that can shoot back a little bit, but not a lot. I'll show some of the weaknesses later. Um, I still want to beat up on something first before I start to make myself look bad. This will make me look bad a little bit compared to the Kingstead, which just gets absolutely destroyed. That was like nearly a million damage alpha. Well, it didn't finish the alpha strike. The alpha strike would have been about a million damage because the Kingstead is really good at catching frag. So we wiggle a little bit on the way in. It's not amazing at dodging Sea Whiz, but it's very good at dodging slower firing weapons that actually take these guys out. Then we come in, drop all of the bombs, watch that frag damage absolutely climb up. Oh, and she's AI dead. Usually it takes more like two passes, sometimes three for that to happen. Um, the Rhea was another one of my choices because her AI compartment is right there. Even if the AI compartment doesn't get ruptured, as soon as it's visible, the Kitty Hawks with their hash can take it out. Oh, they don't always shoot at it. Despawn that Rhea. Make sure all of my vehicles have healed all the way up. Okay, something that doesn't make me look as good. This actually shows off the issues with having no evasion on the way out. As soon as I fix that, this is not going to be th that bad. It's kind of bad right now. Alright, let's go in. We wiggle. This rate of change is actually pretty significant. It really throws off targeting, especially with slower weapons. So you can see these weapons are ready to shoot at us on the way out. It's kind of a problem. If we were dodging at all, it would not be a problem. But that's the first casualty so far. I think we're going to escape a second casualty. Oh, we might not. This one was a latecomer. Once they start coming in, it's very unlikely for them to get hit, especially by crams. Although, these can do real damage to the Kitty Hawks. Still, there's not a huge window where the guns can actually hit, but it's very reliable. On the first pass against the crossbones, I almost always lose between one and two nuggets. The other thing is that because I can't get aim points, 
I drop all the bombs right on the middle of the crossbones. At a certain point, it becomes pretty likely for them to just go all the way through. Like that. Um, hopefully in the future, the generic block getters will be able to get aim points. There's been a lot of requests for that on the Discord. Well, really just one request and a bunch of hearts slapped onto it. And Nick... Well, Nick might not have been the one to actually make it, but there is a... Yeah, just a lot of bombs missing. A lot of... Or there's a channel on the Discord, at Nick's request at least, to put in generic block setter and getter requests. So... Hopefully he'll add that stuff. I think supposedly it's not that it's not that hard. It's just hard to think of all the things he might want to add, which is why he needs help. The failsafes actually do an okay job at not killing the nuggets, but you can see them losing a few blocks, and they have no spall liners because they're just so thin, other than the applique panels, which actually do save them sometimes, I think. Because, you know, there's some applique panels on the top of these guys, which can absolutely save them from these Hesh shells. If they get hit by Hesh anywhere else, it's an instant trip back to base. Ooh, did we cut it in half. Always the goal. Alright, so the crossbones showed some weaknesses. Um, I will show two other craft that show more extreme weaknesses. One of these I can't get around without nerfing these missiles a little bit, which I'm really not willing to do. And it comes down to the fact that they just don't have reinforced bodies. And just that very strong lambs is, in general, a pretty hard counter to this. The Alcazar. On a cheap ship, some of the strongest lambs in the campaign. These takeoffs also aren't super consistent because of the way they nudge into each other. So sometimes they crash on the way in. So depending on when the lambs fire exactly... Oh, nice. Yeah, I actually want these missiles to come in a little bit earlier. I might see if I can change things a little bit. That was definitely a crime cannon hitting a retreating nugget. Depending on when the missiles come in, they distract for the bombs dropped from the nuggets. But other times, you just get this. They do a little bit of damage. But depending on how aggressive the lambs are, they can actually destroy the missiles while they're still in the gantries. And since the whole thing's frag payload, the center of it is far enough back that they destroy their own gantries when it goes off. It's, a, it's actually a huge problem. All right, it looks like the lambs is gone. It's the Alcazar dies immediately as soon as it doesn't have lambs protecting it. But the lambs themselves are actually a huge adva advantage against the nuggets. They have extreme difficulties getting through them. However, there's actually at around the same cost as the setup here. There's one more ship in the campaign that gives it extreme trouble. And it's not one of the likely suspects. Unless you um, know the Steel Strider ships that very well. Give this a little time to repair. It's not easy to put the Kitty Hawks down by destroying the rotors. I know they can fly with one of these missing. They might be able to fly with both of them missing. I've seen them flying at under 40% health. Of course, at that point, they didn't have a gun, but... Can't win, can't win at everything, can you? If memory serves, it's this one. Usually not a scary craft. It has all of the Siwas. It has three Siwas turrets. They're very responsive. Shooting these really nasty bursts. They're very, very good at taking on this incoming fire. It's not the end of the world. We are getting shells through. Actually, that was much more successful than I usually see. Definitely one sea was popped. Oh, we popped two sea was. Okay. It's over for the Trondheim then. 
It also really doesn't like the plunging fire from the Kitty Hawks. It can't deal with Kitty Hawks at all. The Sea Wiz just isn't powerful enough. But the Sea Wiz is extreme for the Nuggets. They get absolutely, absolutely destroyed by it if it works properly. But this time around, really not so lucky for her. Oh, that's an interesting wiggle. That should that shouldn't be happening. Oh. Right, it's they dip during the turns a little bit. Um, they dip during the turns because of some unbalanced thrust. It makes them a little bit unreliable. I think this did not grab what I wanted. I'm trying to figure out if that still didn't grab what I wanted. I was trying to figure out if this one reloaded late. But the game's not cooperating with me. So anyway, this is my just my demo of setting up a carrier. My first carrier, so a lot of things that could go better with it. I still think it works well enough that I'm going to finish armoring her up. I have other ideas for other carriers in the future, and this still is a learning experience for me, but I thought you might find it interesting. Once I armor her up, paint her, maybe a little bit of decorations, probably not going to go nuts though. I will put her against a few craft for real with god mode off on the carrier. Um, she still actually wins a lot of these fights, even as things were here, even though the carrier gets absolutely wrecked. The aircraft still win anyway, but wanted her on god mode so that all of the craft coming back and repairs and that sort of thing would all go off well. So, real actual fights, and then, you know, the Kami Wars, because I have to put her against the Kitakami, and then back to Adventure Mode, which is what I'm actually doing all of this for, even though it'll have taken me off the Adventure Mode for like two weeks or something. I've even lost track at this point. And then I have to build a battleship after that, because my adventure raft can't really tank enough damage to get me into the extreme late game, and currently it's what's taking all the fire. So I need some big dumb block of metal to sponge sponge enough damage for it. There's actually a few a few other ships I need for like energy generation purposes only. Probably gonna use submarines for them. So a bunch of stuff that's gonna delay those episodes a little bit because I have tons of stuff to build, but hopefully it'll also keep it interesting. And, you know, isn't just me dropping all of those episodes in a pile. Anyway, that's enough from the depths for one day, so I hope you all enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the future.